Here's some pictures of me from Millionaire Chess. Played in Las Vegas, Nevada with my cowboy hat there. There was a lady there taking a picture. She was nice enough to post them online for me. Uh, it was a really great tournament. There's another picture. That's the young man on the left. His mother is the one who's taking the pictures here. And uh, there's another picture. And that's me at Millionaire Chess 2014. Great tournament. Well, folks, another great tournament. The 2015 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival being played in Gibraltar. Unbelievable scenery. Gibraltar is an amazing place. Amazing place. World-class player is one of the top-rated opens in the world. Carl Nakamura, uh, Topalov, ex-world champion, Huey E. Fon, you name it, they're there. Oh, a whole lot of English players, you name it, they're all over the world. And they all come here to the Gibraltar once a year for the Gibraltar Chess Festival 2015. From January 26th through February 15th, 2015. Don't miss any of these great games. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Round 4 of the Gibraltar Chess Festival. This is the master section. As White, my buddy from the United States, Carl Nakamura. My compatriot, so to speak. Still number 1 in the United States after the last couple of games. Right now, Carl has three wins in a row against Grandelius, I believe it's pronounced. I'm not sure. I didn't get the background on him, what country he's from. He's playing black. He's 2,600 and change. And Carl's 2,776. The ratings are getting closer and closer on the top boards. It, this is a rare thing, having an open tournament with these kind of top players. I mean, Huey Yifan is here, Topalov, Nakamura, Bantala, Harry Krishna, uh, a lot of good Chinese players, you name it. Very rare. It's going to be in English versus King's Indian. Let's get to it. A3. Pretty much standard stuff. E3. Bishop comes back. Interesting. Now the computer on off screen shows D6 and castles. It must be something that Grandelius was working on in his prep or found a maybe an obscure line. Sometimes when they play these top players, even though 2,602 is exactly a chump, but some of the elite players, that's to say the super grandmasters like a Carl, these guys know their theory down, move 15, 20, and 30 in some cases. So maybe he's just trying to get out of theory. Bishop a7. Knight comes out. Of course, you don't want to move the knight here. For a couple of good reasons. One, it blocks the bishop. And two is with the knight there. Another piece on that really vital d4 square. b4 for white. Castles. d3. Interesting. Bishop b2. Castles. Knight d5. The computer likes as well. d3 is fine as well. And it really covers the, the, the E4 square nice. Knight E7. Castles. C6. H3. Now that consolidates a G4 square, but to be honest with you, I think that's more for this incredibly annoying pin right there. I mean, you'd have to move the queen to C2 to guard it so you don't block in the bishop. Bishop b6. Carl goes bishop b2, of course. Queen d7. Going after the h3 pawn. And of course, king h2. Knight g6. Queen d2. Now, it shows at this point, we're on move 14. It shows about a half point advantage for black. Carl's got a really nice setup here, if you want to know the truth of it. I mean, both of his bishops are extremely doing extremely well. He's got all kinds of coverage on the queen side with the pawns here. He's doing okay. I'm a little surprised the computer shows a small advantage for black. D5. 
Of course, computers go, it's just pure calculation. Interesting, though, I'm not sure about D5. H5 or H6, the computer likes. I think D5 might have been a little premature. C5, there we go. Rook 88. Knight A4. Computer likes Knight A4. Likes F4, too. And a close second is F4. And then Knight G1 is the last choice. Knight A4. Queen E7. Black wants to push. Rook 81. E4. What to do? What to do? Do you take? D takes E. What do you do? A crawl the sides. And also the computer move, and I'm a little surprised. He takes the knight. Queen takes. D takes. You're going to see why in a second here. D takes. Knight A to C3. Now that pawn is doomed. Now technically it's not isolated, but it might as well be. Now just in the last few moves, Carl's got about a point advantage now for white. I'm not saying that black was playing badly, but what happens is over time you get these tiny inaccuracies, and they start to add up. Now that e4 pawn is, is doomed. That bishop on a7 is basically worthless, at least right now. Bishop f5, he's trying to hold on to it. Knight d4, hitting the bishop, bishop to b8. What do you do? Do you take the bishop on f5? Carl, like queen to c2. Hit the pawn again. Knight to h4. Bishop takes. Now the computer likes bishop takes e4. And then knight takes. And then queen to g6. Not too bad. That's pretty good. But he took with a rook instead. And that makes it over almost a two and a half point advantage for Nakamura. Give you an idea after b takes, knight takes, queen g6. It still kind of sucks for black. But it's not nearly as bad as, as the way it worked out. Now, as you all can see, of course, you can't take the knight because of the bishop. After rook takes... Knight takes. What are you going to do now? Queen takes. Thinks he's going to win the piece anyway. But knight takes the bishop. Queen takes. Or excuse me. Intermezzo move. Knight checks. King to g2. Knight takes. Check. Rook takes. Queen takes, rook to d1. Now that was a very interesting series of moves. It looked like white was winning a piece or maybe won the exchange, but it was basically a really strange scenario in a bunch of trades. Two and a half point advantage for Nakamura. And here we go again, just like the other game. You want to grind out a win against Nakamura? When he's a pawn up in a decent position, h5, queen c4, get that annoying pin gone, queen e5, h4, close that right down. Interesting might have been rook to d7, and after h4, rook takes, pawn takes, knight takes. Very good. Four. White, of course. But after h4, it's still good. Queen e7. Knight g5. Get that knight right in the face of the black king there. Now, what you guys do here is black. That bishop is doing an okay job. But where's he really going to go? Bishop c7 is computer choice. Maybe g6. Bishop e5. Maybe get the bishop. 
to E5. Maybe get him back here eventually. Rook to E8. Tough break. And this is on move 31. Now, I'm not sure on the times if black was in time trouble. G4, rook to D4, rook to D4. All good. G6. Queen D3. Here we go. Queen F8. It's just how quickly you can lose. Especially against top-rated players, world-class players. Rook to D7. Here comes the rook. Rook E7. Interesting, though. The computer liked F4. And Queen E7. Rook. Queen. Takes. Takes. Rook checks. King. Rook takes. Rook E7. And, of course, you know, you're down a piece. But after Rook to D7... Rook to e7, and then f4, and that's enough. Black gave up, so that's enough. I can't take the punishment anymore. <laughs> and so, after four rounds, my buddy from the United States, Carl Nakamura, is 4-0. There's four players at 4-0, I believe, from this after this round. So congrats to Nakamura, America's number one. And I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye. And here are some pictures from my trip to Las Vegas for Millionaire Chess. There's the Bellagio, Caesars Palace, the Mirage. Million dollars guaranteed prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. I just want to show you some pictures uh, from off of Las Vegas Boulevard. Beautiful hotels, beautiful buildings. Uh, cabs everywhere. It's like New York. You can get around anywhere you want to. There's a Caesar's Palace on the right. Just wonderful. Another picture of Caesar's Palace. See a little reflection there. It's up on a bridge with glass behind it. Reflected a little bit off the glass. Bailey's down Las Vegas Boulevard again. Place is running 24-7. The economy is booming. I'll tell you, this is the epitome of capitalism, folks. I thought it was a great place. I wish I could spend more time there. Um... Probably a little too hot in the summer, but... And there's Donnie Murray, voted number one performers in Vegas. Very a personal friend of mine, very close, and she loves those guys, so I got that picture for her. There's the Blasio again, and then we go down to... There's the gondolas, those boat rides, and the beautiful buildings, beautifully landscaped. I mean, it's... I'll tell you, I know the economy's tough in the United States, but if you can't find a job here, you can't find a job anywhere. Encore again, uh, building off a view off a bridge, a lot of traffic, but it's very uh, pedestrian friendly. They stop all the cars for the big intersections for the people to get through, and there's a waterfall there of outside of a hotel, and there's me, uh, smiling away, <clears throat> excuse me, a nice bright sunny day in Las Vegas. I call that the needle. I guess you can go up on top of that. Another picture of the Wynn Hotel, Steve Wynn, the big entrepreneur in Vegas. Trump Hotel in Neiman Marcus right next to it there. The Mirage with the uh, Beatles show. And you see Caesar's Palace in the background. And poor Mario there, I cut his head off. There he is. There's Mario. There's people dressed up all over the place. Pirates, showgirls, you name it. The only thing I didn't see was Darth Vader. And there's the Eiffel Tower restaurant. Pretty cool place. And Britney Spears' Peace to Me show. Now, I'm not a big Britney Spears fan, but I went to the show, and it was really, really good. I'm glad I went. It isn't just a concert. It's an actual show. And she did very well, and so did everybody else that was in it. And there's a picture of the airport, me leaving Las Vegas. So there it is, a little picture tour of Las Vegas from when I was at Millionaire Chess in October 2014.